Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. We're continuing on with Unit 1 and today we're going to begin our conversation on maps. Now maps are very important to the study of geography because really uh, this is the main, one of the main tools that geographers are going to use in order to study the earth and the things that are going on in the earth and we've been discussing throughout the videos this idea of spatial interaction. Well, uh, one of the ways that geographers look at and investigate spatial interaction is through the use of maps. Now when we talk about maps, again, it is one of the most important tools geographers have uh, and they are going to be uh, using maps in order to study the earth and its features. Now this term features here can really uh, refer to a lot of different things, whether we're talking about the physical features on the earth, whether we're talking about uh, the people and the cultures uh, the people uh, the people have in a specific space, or it could be different events that occur. Uh, it could be uh, different systems of transportation. Again, it's just really an infinite number of different things in terms of the features that are on the Earth's surface. Uh, and when we talk about the making of maps, really, uh, when we talk when we talk about map technology and the uh, the different uh, types of maps that are made today, uh, you can really make a map for just about anything. Uh, that you would like to study. Uh, and so really the, the possibilities for maps are endless, uh, especially with the new map making technology we have today, and we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Uh, now when we talk about kind of just a definition of a map, it is going to be a two-dimensional representation of the earth uh, or a portion of the earth. Uh, you got, you, you've seen a world map, no doubt. Certainly you've seen uh, localized maps, whether it's a county or a city. And again, just depending on what it is that the uh, the cartographer is trying to show, uh, is going to determine what space is being represented on that particular map. So we talk about map making. The science and the art of map making is what's called cartography, and the map maker is called, called called the cartographer. Now, cartography and cartographers have been around for thousands of years, uh, ever since people have been trying to uh, to indicate to each other uh, about where things are in relationship to themselves and. and uh, communicate those ideas. Now, what has happened over time, obviously, is our is our map making technologies have become more sophisticated. Uh, we have tried to create a standardization of, of creating maps uh, so that uh, everybody's looking at things from the similar perspective. And we'll talk a little bit about this idea of perspective and how it can impact our understanding of the world. Now, there is a problem with maps, and that the, that problem is that. Uh, it's impossible to place the earth or portions of the earth on a map without creating what's called distortion and you're going to distort what are called the properties of maps and we'll get to that in just a minute. Now the reason that distortion is going to happen is because we're trying to take a three-dimensional object, the earth, the earth of course is three-dimensional, things on the earth are three-dimensional and we're trying to put it in two-dimensional form and so you're going to have to have uh, some distortions. It's just not possible to, to accurately represent all elements of the earth and the landscape on the earth on that two-dimensional surface. So the things that are going to be distorted are what are called the properties of maps. And so when we talk about the properties of maps, you see here uh, there are going to be four main properties of maps. We have what's called shape, size, distance, and direction. So when we talk, each of these are uh, fairly self-explanatory, at least I think they are. So when we talk about shape of uh, shapes on maps, which is basically talking about the geometric shapes on the maps. Now mostly uh, these are going to be referring to the land masses uh, that are on the maps. Now, of course, our, our ability to make maps is much more sophisticated today. You see a lot more of this uh, in some of the older maps, especially when the Europeans were trying to come over from Europe to the New World, or when you have um, some of the ancients trying to draw what they consider to be the known world. And so uh, the geometric shapes are going to, going to be distorted based upon uh, the amount of information we're trying to put on the maps. And then yeah, it was called size, and this is basically uh, the area of the landmass that the map is portraying. Uh, now, what's going to happen when we try to put the whole world onto the map in order to try and keep things constant and consistent? You're either going to have to enlarge or shrink uh, some of the landmasses, and we'll talk more about that as we talk about some specific map projections. Uh, then we have distance. Basically, this is just going to be the distance between objects on the map, um, and so based upon again based on the different projections or what's trying to be shown our, our understanding of the distance between objects can uh, especially the land masses uh, can change then we have what's called direction basically this is just the accuracy of cardinal directions on uh, on the map uh, and so when we talk about direction 
hopefully you've had some uh, experience with this in maybe middle school or elementary school or some of your other classes. We have three different types of directions. We have, called, we have what are called cardinal directions, intermediate directions, and relative directions. Now when we're talking about maps and using maps, we're either going to be using cardinal directions or intermediate directions. Of course, that's the cardinal directions are north, south, east, and west, and then our intermediate directions are uh, northeast, northwest, uh, southeast, southwest. And then when we talk about relative directions, this is going to be something that's more uh, along the lines of uh, our everyday use when we talk about things that are next to something or to the left of something or um, along those lines. And so uh, when we talk about maps, again, the use of maps, mainly we're looking at these cardinal directions and intermediate directions. Now, um, th again, the thing that we need to understand is that it's absolutely impossible for a cartographer to 100% accurately represent every property of the map on the map that they're creating. So we know some property will be distorted. So really the cartographer has to make a choice. He has to decide, well, what properties am I going to distort? And a lot of that's going to depend based upon the information that that cartographer uh, is trying to display on the map. Some things are going to be more important than others. And we'll talk more about that again when we get to some of our map projections. So real quick, we're just going to take a, a look at a couple of different uh, the maps now. Just so you're aware, this particular projection is called the Mercator projection, and a lot of people have had some things to say about here in the recent past. Uh, just a couple of things to note. Um, of course, you have the breakup of, uh, of North America, Alaska from uh, from Russia over here. Uh, well, you see, of course, Antarctica is stretched out across the poles. Of course, it's certainly not uh, not as large as it appears. Um, but anyway, so if you look at this particular map, you know, one of the things uh, that people talk about is, uh, you know, we of course we call this, you know, the Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere, Eastern Hemisphere, and, and that is, as people have said, a very Western-centric, Eurocentric view uh, of the world. Uh, you know, there's really no reason why we had to, uh, to make uh, the equator our, our, uh, our line and go north of it to North America. It's just the way we've done in the past, of course, because the Europeans are the ones who uh, are the ones who really started a lot of this and began uh, disseminating that information. Um, but anyway, so of course the maps in, in today, we like to standardize them so we kind of get a, a general idea of, of how things are and keep it fairly consistent. Um, so if we look at this particular map, you know, one of the things I, I, I do with my classes, I say, okay, well, where's India on this map? So India is over here. Okay, so you see that it is east of the United States, um, and then you know, uh, east of Africa, and so forth and so on. Um, but if we go to our, our next map, you see how I took uh, some of the information on the map and made it a little bit different. Now, if we look at it from this particular perspective, you know, now India is to the west of the United States, and so that information has changed a little bit. You also talk about the size of India and how it's changed. It's, um, now it's still maintained kind of an easterly direction of Africa. But again, in relationship to the United States, you had uh, the the, uh, the direction of India change. Now, of course, the position of uh, the actual placement of India hasn't changed. Just the way that we're looking at it has changed. And then, of course, we go to this particular map, and our scale has begun to change. And we're, we're not to scale yet, but you know, we we get this. Uh, we get a smaller scale. I'm oh, sorry. We get a larger scale, and so we get a smaller land area. We get a little bit more. Uh, clarity in terms of what specifically is going on in the area. India looks much larger. We can see some of the boundaries between the different countries. Uh, this even gives us a couple of physical features uh, on the map. So we're beginning to understand something different about uh, the country of India based upon the different maps that we were looking at. One was strictly political, the other was uh, a little bit more topographical in nature, and this one shows us some political and topographical features. Uh, so again, based upon the map that I'm looking at, uh, the information that I have uh, is going to change. So that's going to wrap up our conversation about maps uh, for right now. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk about the different uh, projections and how uh, properties are stored. I'm going to give you some examples of those.